Thank you. <coughs> Last lesson, we learned about the force of gravity. And we learned that gravity is a force that tends to pull all objects towards the center of the earth. In this edition, we shall be looking at another type of force. We call it the magnetic force. We have learned that the term force means a pull. Force is a pull, a push, or lift of an object. Pull, push, or the lifting of objects is referred to as force. A force acting on an object will create some movement to that object. For example, we have a screw here. It is at one point stationary. It can only move from one point to another point, either when it is pushed, pulled, or even lifted. But once it is lifted in the air and released, another form of force will pull it back to the table. That type of force which has made the screw land back to the table is what we refer to as the force of gravity. For this session, we shall learn much more about other objects which have some impact on things. Me, I have some metallic objects which have their own form of force within them. They are called magnets. To find out more about these magnets and how they behave when other metallic things are near them, we will need to get a different collection of materials. So we'll have something like a piece of chalk with us. We might get a paper clip. We should be able to get some seeds. These are maize seeds. So let's get, let's get some few seeds. We have some office pins. We have a paper clip. We have some thumb tacks. We have a knife. This is a pen knife. You can see it is a pen knife. We'll have a ball. And some aluminium material. Now, out of the assorted items, 
We want to find out what will happen in case a magnet is brought close to them. What do you think might happen to them? You, you can as well discuss in groups of two or three and try to find out what might happen. Now let's bring in some pieces of paper and we'll tear them into smaller pieces. There we are. These are pieces of paper. Now these metals that I have in my hand, they have their own type of force within them. They are called magnets. A magnet is a special type of material that harbors within itself some form of energy that can attract some objects towards it. It may also be able to repel some away from it. And for others, it may not have any effect at all. Let's see what happens. What do you think will happen if I take any of these magnets and put them close to the pieces of paper? Let's see. Put it on a piece of paper. The paper remains stationary. The paper does not move. What do you think will happen if the magnet is moved closer to the rubber ball? The ball is made of rubber. And once the ball is stationary, what do you think will happen? Try putting it on the ball. The ball remains stationary. What about the aluminium piece of metal? You try. There is no effect. It's not moving at all. So, the things which, when a magnet is brought very close to, them and they are not moving at all are called non-magnetic materials. Now let's try the same thing on other materials. For example, on this paper clip, what might happen? There you are. Even before the magnet could come into direct contact with the paper clip, we saw the paper clip somehow jumping up and moving to the magnet. I'll do that again. Move the magnet closer to the paper clip. And let's see what happens. The magnet has been able the magnet has been able to attract and pull the paper clip towards it. Not where I have held the magnet at the farthest end and not where the magnet is attached to the clip at the lower end. It is the magnetic force that attracts, that attracts the clip towards it.
Let's try it out with one office pin, the risky pin. Do that, bring it closer to the pin, and there it is. The magnet is able to attract the pin. What do you think will happen when this pin which is already attached to the magnet is brought close yet to another pin? The second pin has also been attracted. So it is the force of the magnet that is holding both pins together. Remember, before the magnet reached the pin, we were able to notice that it is the pin which moved towards the magnet. Now we'll do it slowly and find out from which point the pins or, or the clips will start moving towards the magnet. So we'll put a clip and push the magnet slowly and gradually closer towards the pin. Now, did you see that? The pin moved towards the magnet at a very high speed. Let's separate them and do that again. So, the magnet once moved towards the paper clip. The paper clip, remember, is very stationary and it is the magnet that is being pushed. But I want you to be keen to find out what happens to the clip. Does it remain stationary or does it move? There you are. Did you notice that the paper clip moved towards the magnet? That was due to a force within the metal bar called the magnet. Let's try it with a collection of pins and find out what happens when a magnet is passed through the pins. There they are. Our magnet has been able to collect. There is a paper clip. We have several pins. And we even have another pin called the thumb tanks. All of these have been attracted and they are being held by a force found within the bar magnet. Let's try to compare. We have a pen knife here. The pen knife has two parts, the blade part and the handle. Which part do you think will be attracted or pulled by the magnet. The handle is made of plastic. The blade or the cutting part is made of steel. Which part do you think will be attracted by the magnet? Good. Let's try. We take the magnet first towards the plastic handle. Is it being attracted? No. The knife remains stationary. What about the metallic part? There you are. The magnet has been able to pull the blade 
from the surface of the table towards the magnet through a force called magnetic force. So there is movement. The force of a magnet, as you can see, it can make the blade move even without coming into direct contact with the whole knife. So, in our lesson, we have learned that a magnet is able to attract other magnetic items and it creates a type of movement. In conclusion, we should also take note of the following fact that the force from the magnet does not make non-magnetic items stick on the magnet. But the same force from the magnet is able to pass through a, through a non-magnetic material. Like this paper is non-magnetic. And once we have pins, or even a pin, or let's say this, put this clip and we put the magnet beneath you will notice that the clip is now able to be moved and it moves towards the direction of the magnet as the magnet is being pulled so does the clip move this is proof enough that it is the magnetic force passing through the non-magnetic material, like paper. The non-magnetic material does not block the force of the magnet. It allows the force of the magnet to pass through it. That one was paper. Let's try it with the aluminium. Aluminium, in normal circumstances, it does not, it is not attracted by a magnet. What do you think will happen if we put the aluminium material between the magnet and another non-magnetic material, for example, the clip? Let's see what happens. We see the pin is moving. It's moving towards the direction of the magnet. This means that the magnet is able to pull this clip by forcing its energy through the non-magnetic material. With that, we come the end of our lesson and we have to remember one fact that magnets also have their own form of force and they make movement possible to magnetic materials bye bye bye